This is Boxing Tickets and I. We're here at the Ulster Hall for the breakout show. Delighted to be joined by Victorious Glenn Byrne. Glenn, when you made your debut back in November, who would have thought four months later you're going to be fighting the Ulster Hall in the zone? I know you sort of knew about this before your second pro fight, but now it's done, it's finished. You, you, you can stop pinching yourself now. I'm sure you really enjoyed that. Yeah, 100%. Um, I would never imagine this. As I said in an interview during the week, a new opportunities will come. Um, never this soon. I thought it would have taken me probably to maybe eight or nine fight team because I'm learning and I'm constantly learning, so I'm grateful for Jay and Butch, uh, JB Promotions, but also Common and Boxing for giving me the opportunity. Um, this will benefit me. This is as good as anything I can get in my, as early in my career. I guess, you know, when you're going back down to Dublin now and obviously fighting on, on obviously your brother's shows and stuff again, it's sort of going to go, where's the lights, where's the cameras? Is, is, it, is it sort of going to take you a bit to sort of re- realise sort of that not every show is going to be on the zone now sort of thing? I guess you never know what the future can hold, but, you know, Obviously, fighting the Ulster Hall, like, nothing's probably going to compare for that again for a while for you. Yeah, no, you see, when I go back to Dublin, this, is, this, this here is more out of the ordinary than what Dublin, like, my career for the first while will be on a platform like in the Red Hill. Very grateful, they're brilliant shows, um, they're great for the career, they're great for learning. This one was well unexpected, as I said, so I don't expect this again for another while. Um, I'm learning, I didn't think it was going to come so early, so once I keep learning, performing, um, as I step it up, I'm sure the opportunities will come. I hope um, I hope the fans enjoyed it. I hope uh, Michael and Jamie were happy with my performance. I think maybe the crowd might like it. It was a decent uh, back and forth fight. Sloppier than what I probably should have done. But it, it was good learning fight for me. I guess the first round was sort of maybe, I guess, in some ways, probably Martin Shaw done you a favour. He didn't really come and throw any volume, sort of. You sort of go, what's going on? It's just a mess around. Like, was there was there stages I'd maybe saying that maybe the fourth and fifth round you maybe blowing a wee bit? Obviously you have the you were doing a lot of stuff on the front foot. Were you just trying to conserve energy? Were you sort of getting that stage where you knew the fight was done and dusted? That you were sort of able to ease off a bit? No, well, do you know what? I have a problem. Like obviously, as I said, I'm learning. I always start with a high tempo. I'm actually always trying to tell me to calm down, calm down. For some reason, I don't know what it is, and I do sort of. I'm gonna say blow me to ask it, but it does then take me a bit to get back down. So I think that's where. I'm, I'm starting quick, which I probably just no need. As you said, Martin was very slow in the first round. I could have been more composed. I could have taken my time. Like I, th- I think I done well boxing wise in the first round. I was, I was quick, but I threw too much unnecessary punches. But it's all learned. I will pick that up. Um, I need to learn to be more calm, and composed. Um, but I will come. I will. Pull. I guess you know there's good moments. Obviously, if I think he landed a, a lovely uppercut in the second, and and obviously even in the sixth round he was obviously trying to come back at you a wee bit, and he landed obviously a, a nice straight right hand as well. Like he was showing flashy moments. Like I guess the good thing is is obviously you're going to go home tomorrow, and you're probably going to sit and watch it back again. You're probably going to be your worst critic, sort of in some ways. Yeah, no. Uh, even coming back out there, Jay and Matthew delighted with me. Clear, I'm delighted I got the win, but it wasn't as good a performance as I wanted. Um, as you said, I come with a, lo- a lot of lovely one twos. I wasn't following up with that, or if I was following up, I was smothering the distance. I was going in with my head low. It was like when I threw, I, I wasn't confident in throwing the next set of shots. Uh, I did, I caught him with a lovely uppercut. I think it might have been six on a common lovely uppercut. We worked on the uppercut a lot of times in training. So I, ju- I just, I don't know if I wasn't confident in throwing or what, I just didn't see the opportunity. But as I said, it's learning, it's going to come. Like, that, that benefits me more than stopping something in the first round because I, there's so many bad things I've done there that I can pick up on. I've done good things as well, but it's more so I'd rather look at the bad things, pick up on the bad things so I can learn. It was it was a tough fight. The, the, the 18 minutes going to benefit me big time in the long run. You were going to say you doubled your round count, obviously. You had six, six rounds, obviously, previously. Well, you had less than six rounds, obviously, your last fight was stopped in the second, but you've, you've doubled your round, so that's experience that obviously you can't buy. You obviously a limited amateur experience, obviously white collar and stuff as well. So that experience is vital for you moving forward. Yeah, that, that's huge. And on the platform that it was, like uh, it does nervous energy. I was nervous going out there tonight. Don't get me wrong. I, I think anybody will be sort of so worried in their career. Um, it's a huge platform, so it, it, it will benefit me. As you said, that is double the rounds that I would have done. So now I think we we'll go. Maybe we we'll probably go for six rounds again. And I don't need to jump to eight rounds yet. I need to wait until I'm getting through the six rounds. When I butter, I I put in all the hours. But I noticed in there that geez, the fitness wasn't as good as it should have been. I got through the rounds, but I should be fitter. And so now I have to go back and look and say, right, what do I need to change? What do I need to do? I need more intensity training. I don't know what it is, but I will have to go and look at it because I need to keep improving. I guess that, that activity for you as well is massive. Obviously, the, the quicker you can get fights together, obviously, rather than sparring away everywhere, you can sort of you can learn in the ring at the same time. So I guess you know Jay's probably going to have you on the, your May tenth show. Yeah, I will box on May tenth. Do you know what? And I, I actually said it in the last. I, I haven't sparred. Uh, I haven't. I haven't made a big shot to the body since. Uh, 
first week in January I broke my rib uh, I have to go and see a specialist now because I want its fuel together by new bone growth or something so I haven't been able to take body shots I took them there and it was fine so now I'm happy so now in this camp I can progress and I can go back to body sparring but it is that I need to go back I need to the next fight has to be someone else that's going to bring something different to take it out of me but I need to up the intensity um, what I found there was I had a quick turnaround last fight was first of March um, to now, I dropped a kilo on weight. I hit this weight easier than I hit the weight in the first of March. So the activity, like, I'm going to, my next fight is probably going to be at 69, whatever the limit is for welter, super welter. So I'm going to keep trying to go down and get down. The more activity, the easier it is to hit the weight, and I'm only going to get sharper and progress and get better. So that's, that's the aim. And I'm sure, obviously, you want to thank obviously everybody who come up obviously the road. Obviously, your your first two fights in Dublin easier. They sell tickets. Obviously, people having the travel obviously up to Belfast. Obviously, I'm sure these are probably the, the the fans that you probably want the most of the loyal to travel with you everywhere. Yeah, no, I'm usually grateful. Um, I think I've done about 40 tickets. So for me, for someone who doesn't really come from a boxing background, it's hard to sell tickets. It's a tough game it is. And I have a, I have a solid fan base, really good friends, family, people. Uh, People reaching out to me who I've only started to, learn, uh, to get to know from when I started boxing, they're coming and supporting me, it's huge. And I'm hoping now that this platform gives me a bigger opportunity and helps me gain more fans that it does make these nights better. Um, I'm hugely grateful for everybody who did travel up. Um, same with my sponsors. On the top we have Next Gen, I have Natural Kitchen, Matten uh, Recovery and Transport, Metway, The Lock In, uh, Ian Coyle Carpentry, Career Vision Recruiters, and Tammy. These make these nights possible. You have to. You have to put in the work and training, you have to cover medicals, fees, everything. Wes Ham a minibus, he's the one who brought the minibus up with me fan, so I'm grateful for everyone. Everybody who put any time into me or any money into me, I'm hugely grateful for. I guess it's that added bonus for the people who came and sponsored you, they thought, oh, you're fighting obviously a red cow. They've got that added bonus now where you fought in the zone, so they've got more for their money. You know, if, if there's always anybody out there that's thinking of, should a sponsor, the best time to sponsor someone at the very start, because you don't know where it can go, and with your brother involved there as well, you don't know what opportunities you're going to get. You could be on a boxer card next, you could be on a, a Frank Warren show, you just don't know where you could be next. Yeah, but that's like, so when I'm going and asking people to sponsor me, like, a lot of people know me around the area, but it's not for boxing. So now it's like I'm saying to sponsor me, they're saying, you weren't boxing last year, so why would I invest money in there, blah, blah, and it's tough, but the people who did invest in me, I usually grateful and I will I do everything in my power to get to get it back to them through support. Like the pub, my local pub, the lock in, show the fight tonight, a lot of people up and um, tomorrow I'll travel home, I'm gonna go up to say thank you, the same. Anybody who does support me, I'll try and give back and I'm gonna try now. Try when I grow my career, I want to try and help grow them a bit because they've helped me from the start. As you said, it could be easy for people to try and jump on board now because they've seen a platform that I've performed on, and hopefully now it goes up. I know obviously I'm going to come back down, fight on the shows, which is what I what I deserve to fight on until I get another opportunity. But people who do give me the people who give me the support this early, I can't thank them enough. Well, listen, thanks very much for your time. Obviously, congratulations on moving to 3 0. You look forward to a good feed tomorrow before you get back in the campaign for May the 10th. Yeah, thank you very much for your time, Marty. You're, you're always here. Thank you very much. Cheers, Glenn. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marty.